This is the SST Fogless Coolant Mister System Kit. Now, SST stands for Stupid Simple Tools. So that's what they make, but it's stuff that's for highly complex tools like CNC machining and stuff like that. So this Fogless Coolant System is a direct competitor to the Fogbuster who used to have a patent on their system. Their patents expired for over 10 years. So there's nothing wrong here with what SST has created and doesn't violate any of the Fogbuster patents because they're long expired. One thing I wanted to point out, which I was fairly surprised by, it says made in sunny St. Petersburg, Florida, USA. For the cost of this, which is less than half of what a Fogbuster system costs, I was shocked that it was not made in China. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure that some of these components are probably imported, but that's to be expected. So let's check out what's in the box. So we have a magnet stand, which of course this is your uh, Amazon special style magnet stand. So that's definitely not made in St. Petersburg, but you know, whatever keeps the cost down. And these are actually pretty good, even uh, made in China. And if you check out some of my other videos, I show how you can do a ball bearing mod in here to make it much nicer such that you can back drive this arm without it tightening or loosening. Like, go this direction it loosens until it like flops around and then if I go in the other direction oftentimes it'll tighten up this yeah there we go it's tightening up really tight and then I go this direction and it just loosens up so the ball bearing mod is very nice mod in my opinion for easily being able to adjust the position and it turns this really inexpensive dial indicator arm to something that's like no good quality level which is a hundred dollar plus tool there's two hoses. These hoses are already bonded together into a single unit. That's kind of cool. There's the coolant tank. Now they specifically say with this coolant tank, do not use alcohol because alcohol will damage this plastic and cause it to fracture. Do not use lube cube with these chemicals. Polycarbon is tough and transparent polymer and susceptible to chemical damage from certain lubricants and thinners, including isopropyl alcohol and certain synthetic oils. Certain synthetic oils is kind of an open book right there. Exposure to these chemicals can cause hazing, cracking, or explosions. Do not use lube cube with these chemicals. I have seen some reviews where someone did not heed these warnings and use alcohol and this thing burst. Even at the low pressures you're gonna be using this at, it's still a lot of force when it's in here and it can burst violently and do a lot of damage. To be honest, I don't really trust this because I don't know what certain synthetic oils are. So I'm going to be making a metal cage that goes around this and will capture any fragments if this does explode. Here this valve says made in China. I'm sure this is made in China too. So the assembly was probably done in the US in this case from international components. This just looks like an opening port to quickly refill it. What's in the tiny box? Oh, a gauge. This gauge fits on the pressure regulator. We want to put a little bit of thread sealant in there first, just like they've done here. Got some screws for mounting, mounting bracket. And now the actual tool. This is kind of a cool design box. Multiple pieces glued together and bent up into shape. So a card to scan for the product manual. Saves them on paper. Stupid simple tools. Okay, so here is the golden doohickey, and this is probably what they're talking about that's made in St. Petersburg, Florida. This looks like a much nicer design. Mine has a nice scratch there already. But you know, I machine and fabricate stuff for a living, and it is hard to get perfect parts without messing something up somewhere. Whatever, this is a tool that's going to be used. I'm not worried about it. It's going to get scratched up. This is the nozzle that screws into the end here. I'm going to take some dimensions on that to see what these dimensions are in here, just out of curiosity. There is an O-ring in here that's seated in an outer groove. That's unusual because usually you seat O-rings in inner grooves. The thread is quite a bit further down, so it's not just sitting on top of the thread. So one thing that reviewers mentioned comparing this to the fog buster is that the flow adjustment knob is a lot nicer and a lot more precise than the fog buster. The fog buster just has a very small thumb screw on top, so this allows for more precise adjustment. There are two mounting positions on here. There's one on the top here and one on the back. This one has a set screw in it. The airline connections are well labeled, so you have the cool and the air, and on here you have the cool and the air. So it's going to be easy to connect those to this hose. You just need to split the hose a little bit near the beginning, plug the bottom one in to the air and top one into the coolant. It says that these are M6 screws. There's five of them. You only need four of them for here. And this is for the mounting bracket that goes up on here. So those holes are already threaded into the plastic. 
Make sure to not over tighten the screws too much and not to cross thread it since you're going to plastic. It uses an M5 hex driver and like I said just lightly tighten those screws because those are plastic threads. This bracket feels like aluminum. The pressure gauge uses a tapered NPT fitting. In theory you don't really need to add Teflon tape because this should lock and seal due to the taper. However, it won't hurt to add a little bit of Teflon tape. So the attachment arm can be screwed into the top or the side. And what's interesting, the way they did this is there's a set screw here. So if you screw it in the top, you can actually press the set screw against this non-threaded tip. Vice versa, if you screw this in from the side, you put the set screw in from the top, it presses against there and locks it. So it prevents this from rotating. It's kind of a smart solution for that. Pull this out a little bit. Screw this one in. It's not screwing in quite as easily as I would like. Use the wrench. I don't want to cross thread anything. Okay, now it's smooth. So now once the mount is attached, then tighten up this set screw back here to make sure that it won't get loose. It's a neat idea. It seems secure. I like it. All right, let's go install it on the machine and try it out. Okay, so I'm noticing an issue here with the coolant pickup hose. It wants to curl back up and this is not heavy enough for it to fall to the bottom. So even if I try to get it to go downwards like that, it's not going to the bottom. And especially when I start to screw this back on, watch, it just curls up and flips back up to the top. So that's no good. We'll have to put like a bolt on it or something to get it to stay down. So let's take a closer look at the dimensions of this nozzle. This piece appears to be made of brass. The external dimensions are 5.97, so approximately 6 millimeters stock material. Overall length, including the threads, is 130.31. The overall length, not including the threads, 122.44. The length of the threaded area is about 6.86. So the overall length of the non-threaded area, including a little shoulder area, is 123. The inner diameter of the threaded end of the large hole is so 0.116 inches, which is 2.95 millimeters. The small hole in the end, a number 55 drill bit just barely fits in there. That measures 1.3 millimeters. And then the depth that this is drilled to, pretty deep drill, that long. That is a very deep drilled hole. That is approximately 123.5 millimeters in depth. Very deep hole considering the diameter. So that ratio is huge, which is really only possible to do since this is brass and it's easy to machine. Okay, so initially I was planning to mount the canister here on the machine to make it easy to access. Then I remembered, I don't want a bomb at chest or face height. So until I get the chance to make a metal mesh enclosure around this, I'm gonna mount this around the backside somewhere over here, out of the way of anything, such that if it does explode, it's not gonna throw shrapnel at us. So one issue I had right away was that this hose tends to get crimped pretty easily. Here it's not getting crimped yet, but I had several situations where, depending on where I put it, it got crimped. So as I got this selection set of springs, uh, Harbor Freight Special, which is not the highest quality stuff, but comes in handy sometimes. So they actually have some springs in here that don't even have any ends on them. And I think they're the perfect size for this tubing. We're going to try that out. That's that compression 516 by 1 and 3 quarters, which I don't know why they call that compression because you can't compress this. It's already compressed. So that's actually a perfect fit for the tubing. And as you can see, when it bends tightly, it strain relieves it and it doesn't get crimped like this top one is getting crimped right here. Isn't that cool? And now with both springs on here, you can see that when I bend the tubes around, they don't get crimped. So they can still get crimped like out here, but that's when I really bend them hard by hand. This, you can see, allows it to give it a radius. An even longer version of this would be even better because then you could get the full turn before it goes straight. That would be nicer. 
Check the link down in the description to where you can buy the spring assortment on Amazon to do the strain relief mod. So it would be nice if the coolant didn't backflow all the way to the tank. Now watch what happens when I stop the coolant. I'm going to turn the coolant off. Watch this. And it backflows all the way back to the coolant tank. Or most of the way back. There it goes. But you can't elevate the coolant tank above the nozzle because coolant will then just flow out. So I'm going to separate the coolant and air lines and both have their own pressure regulator and be independent systems and then hopefully the coolant won't backflow and I'll be able to control the coolant pressure and the air pressure independently. So I did notice that SST now includes a check valve to prevent that backflow. So if you buy a SST lube cube now, you're going to get a check valve with it. Here it is shown again on the machine. SST now also offers a polypropylene container instead of the polycarbonate container, which is non-transparent, so you won't be able to see the level inside, but this is more resistant to chemicals like alcohol and such, so it shouldn't explode if you use alcohol. Mm -hmm.